All right, we're back, and uh, this time we're going to take a look at the rest of the settings that uh, are available to customize there under the Settings tab in the menu. Uh, and so let's start with Project Settings. There's a couple reasons why uh, you might be interested in checking this out uh, at any given point in, in your project. First of all, you might be working in a project that somebody else started, or it may be a project that uh, you have resurrected from a couple of years ago, and you want to check and see what the project settings are and to know exactly what you're working with. And so opening up this project settings, you can check over here the settings that are currently applied to the project that you're working at. You can see the frame size, the frame rate, the aspect ratio, the field order, whether it's interlaced or progressive. And so by going through here, you can verify just exactly what you're working with as you work with a project that you may not be that familiar with. Another reason why you can go in here is that you can actually change the settings. Down here, you'll see a little button that says change current settings. And you may be wondering, well, why would I ever want to change the settings of a project that's already started? Well, for one thing, the person who started the project may not necessarily have been that clear on uh, what would be the most appropriate setting to start a project with based on the primary footage that uh, is contained or being edited by the project. And here's your opportunity to try and go in and uh, choose settings that would be more appropriate to the, the vast majority of the footage that you're working with. Uh, another reason why you might change the setting is you may want to export several different versions of the program. For example, you may be working in an HD environment and have completed the edit. You've exported an HD version, but you also realize that there might be some people that want to project your project using an older projector that may only be capable of projecting a standard definition video. And uh, so you may want to also save a version that is standard definition. And uh, so let's uh, cancel out of this for, for now. And what I would recommend, if you want to do something like that, save two different versions or export two different versions, there's several different ways that you could do that. But one way is, first of all, do a save as, and you can do that with this icon here of the little floppy disk, uh, or up here under File, Save As, or use the keyboard shortcut, Shift, Control, S. And this works very similar to uh, word processing programs where you can save your document under a different name and have two different versions of it and start working with a second version and maybe in a different direction. And uh, so let's call this the same name as the main project, but we'll call it uh, with a SD extension for standard definition. And once we save that, the project that then becomes active is the project that you did a save as for. So now we have a copy of our project, but it's called uh, Beautiful Smiles SD. So now anything that we do is not going to affect the original project. We're only going to be making changes to this uh, saved copy. So let's go up and try this. Let's go up to Settings, Project Settings, and let's change our current settings from an HD project to a standard definition. And uh, so we could go up to a video preset, choose a video preset that is standard definition, and we'll look for 720 by 480 would be the most appropriate one. There's two ways we could go on this. We could say, let's try and save this in standard definition, but in a 16 by nine aspect ratio. However, a lot of projectors, especially if the projector operator is not that savvy, may not necessarily know how to switch a setting on the projector to make it able or capable of displaying in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So a little trick that you can do is actually change it to uh, 4 by 3 aspect ratio and then our um, HD video should appear as kind of a letterbox format. Let's check this out and see if it works. And then what we have now is our high definition video is now in a standard definition project which if we hit export now, will export in a letterboxed fashion. So what EDIUS is doing is taking all of our HD material and um, transforming it on the fly into an SD project. So now we could just hit F11 and export that, and we would have our standard definition letterboxed version of our, our edit. Other ways that you might use this uh, 
little trick is to let's go back to a um, high definition project here but let's promote the video to be a 10-bit video and uh, doing this doesn't actually make it 422 video but it uh, can enhance your video in, in some ways at least that's the hope so now we're back to a high definition video and it is uh, filling our screen 16 by 9 and it's actually in a 10-bit environment so uh, if at any point in time as you're working with your project you want to uh, try and uh, convert your project into uh, something that uses other possible settings you can keep this in mind and uh, give it a try it doesn't really allow you to change everything for example I don't think that we can um, change it to a PAL format using this method at least in version 7 it didn't allow that and again it's looking here like there's no PAL options here uh, let's try taking a look at uh, frame rate and it's grayed out it doesn't uh, allow us to change the frame rate and so you can't change everything using this process but it does allow you to change a lot of things and so if you reach a point uh, in a project that you need to or want to try and uh, change some of the settings that were originally made when the project was started remember that that's possible all right uh, let's take a look at uh, sequence settings and basically uh, the big thing that this allows you to do is change the name of any given sequence that you're working on edius allows you to have i think 99 or maybe even unlimited now uh, number of sequences that are attached to any project so that's very nice you can have different languages you can have different versions of your project a short version of the project and this allows you to change the name however this same option is also available just by going up and pointing to any one of the tabs here of uh, of your sequences right clicking on it and uh, going to sequence settings there and there you can change the name maybe we can give this the full name However, as we see, by giving it a longer name there, there's not enough room in the tab to actually identify it, and it ends up looking the same as our original long version of the project. So that's probably why I had it uh, set as an abbreviation there. One last setting here, change profile. Uh, you might wonder why we might want to do that. Well, you might be tag teaming with uh, other individuals on a big project, and uh, so if you need to punch the clock and go home and someone else needs to sit down uh, and uh, finish up your project for a, a, a news deadline at six o'clock when they take over want to change to their settings so that the keyboard shortcuts and everything else work according to the way they're used to and that allows you the opportunity to do that in the middle of a project all right well i believe that does it for this lesson on uh, the other settings under the settings tab so where do we go from here? I think the, the next thing that I'm going to do, start rebuilding this project that we've been looking at from scratch so that you can get an idea of how to edit a program from beginning to end. And that way, those of you who are brand new to editing will have a first-hand, step-by-step example of how you can edit a documentary or a short promo. And so over the next uh, 10 tutorials or so, you will get a good example of how you can do that. So we'll see you down the road in the next lesson and uh, start this project over from scratch as though we were building it for the very first time.